uh, if you will, and tells us how things uh, how things might go this upcoming week. But uh, before we do that, Mike, let's review last week. How did you do with your picks on uh, sort of the week one of the American Conference League? All right, another winning week, two weeks oh, in a row. I know, I know, I know. Two and one for the second time in a row, putting me at four and two for the season now. Last week I had UCF covering seven and a half against Georgia Tech. We all know what happened there. I had uh, the one, the cows, they were 25 point underdogs, lost by twice as much to Notre Dame. And the one game I lost was SMU. They actually ended up covering against North Texas. I took North Texas in that game. But two and one again, you go two and one gambling every week, you're going to make a lot of money. Right? So everybody will take that. And if you listen to me for the first two weeks so far, you're happy right now. You're four and two. All right, four and two, courtesy of UCF. Mike, uh, have you had a chance to look at the poll, uh, pool tracker uh, and how people are doing? Is, uh, is that thing still working really well? Who's, uh, who's on top, do you know? Uh, I can't tell you who's on top. I can go look at it right now. I, I did see that you didn't make your picks Damn this it. week. I think you <laughs> forgot about them. <laughs> I had a good week there. I think I went like four and one. Wow. And the one game I lost was probably the same one, the uh, the SMU North Texas. I'm not going to give you guys picks on here and then go against them on, on the pool. Whatever I tell you here, that's because I believe that's what's going to happen. Let me see if I can get the, uh, like some, the standings real quick. Look at, look at you, quick. a man of integrity, you know? <laughs> Just look at that. It's not going to change his mind, even though he did have three different scores for the UCF game. But I will give you credit, my friend. <laughs> On the pregame show, you were closest to the pin in terms of score predictions. I think you had – uh, would you have forty four to to twenty? I think was what you had. Um, uh, yeah, I think that's what I settled on. You so you were uh, you were closest to the pin between myself and Trace um, in terms of actual score predictions. Paul Jones, I love the sixty four twelve. We were close for a while there, buddy, uh, but didn't quite pull that one off. So you I were, think you said you, like sixty three nothing. <laughs> I think he said I don't even know. Yeah, see, it was definitely in the sixties, but uh, uh, we were close there. But uh, unfortunately, no cigar. All right. Well, I'm looking at the standings now for the pool pool tracker ucf mikey which is not me is in first place right now with seven uh points he's leading the way i don't know if this guy just likes me that much and he has the same name or what but he he has a y at the end of his name Uh, (laughs) thanks we know how to spell mikey thank you (laughs) (laughs) then there's a handful probably about 10 people with six right behind them and then i'm in that the next group with five correct so there's a big bunch up there towards the top and you, and you got people with four correct picks, and then it starts dwindling down to three, two, one. You, Jeez. even though you didn't make any picks this week, where are you at? Uh, I don't know, I can't oh, there you are. You're at three. You're at three. Yeesh. You should have made some picks this week. You'd probably be up there towards the top. I could have sworn I did. Um, well, well, do, do us a favor. Take a screen grab of like the, the top of the leaderboard there. Maybe tweet that out. Um, sometime in the next couple of days so people can see where they are and uh, we can make sure you guys stay on uh, on par here. Don't be a bad uh, pick person like me and forget to make your picks. Again, we're working on some prizes. We got some things uh, in the works. Uh, so we'll, we'll get something for you. Don't you worry. But get in there each week and uh, and make your picks and see how you do, how you fare against Mike. But again, you get a free read on what Mike's going to do because he does it for you at least in some fashion each and every week, Mike. So you've got three games up this week. Where are we heading, and what are we thinking? All right. I, I think a lot of my success so far this year is due to the music. Oh, boy. So hit the music, baby. All right, hit the music. Okay. All right. Game number one. Cincinnati Bearcats, 14-point favorites at home against the Army Black Knights. Last week, Cincinnati, pretty impressive, beating up on Austin P. They were up 48-6 to early in the fourth quarter there. Austin P put up a couple points at the end, and I believe the final was like 55 to 20. But Army has gotten off to a 2 0 start this year. They've outscored their opponents 79 to 7. This is going to be their biggest game on the schedule and up until the big year, uh, game at the end of the year against Navy. They're going to be pumped up for this one. Cincinnati last year, if you remember, they pulled out some games that I don't know how they won, close ones at the end. Went down to the wire against Tulsa and East Carolina and even the Cows. I think the Black Knights hang in there. Keep it close this week. Uh, Cincinnati pulls off the win, maybe with a late touchdown. Something maybe 34-23. I'm taking the points with Army. 14 points is a lot. I'll I'll take the Black Knights in this one. Okay. 
That'd be a nice right. little. Uh, do we want army? Is, how does that? How does that work in the? No, East? we want yeah. Cincinnati. Yeah, yeah, we want we Cincinnati. Want Cincinnati to win, we want, right? Yeah, we want them to win big. We want as much hype. Hey, if Cincinnati stays ranked ahead of us, I don't care. Right, you know, that's better for us. If they are, you know, whenever when we come when they come to Orlando and they're ranked number four, it, even better. You know, and then we can knock them off. That can only help. We don't want them to lose, but uh, 14 points is a lot. So I'll take Army for this one. Game number two. Everybody's been waiting for it. The Willie Taggart Bowl down in Boca. FAU. That's right. FAU is three point favorites against the Cows of South Florida. <laughs> Willie's got revenge on his mind. The, cow- the Owls have not played a game yet this year. The last time we saw them, they beat up on SMU in their bowl game, 52 28. The Cows still licking their wounds from the pounding that the Irish gave them this week. What a debacle. How about that guy uh, we talked about last week, Aaron McMahon, that ranked the Cows number 20? What does he have to say this week? Yeah, that's uh, a good question. <laughs> uh, and, and I have a question. Oh. Is the bus driver still getting paid by both these schools? Uh, are the Cows still uh, paying Willie T? I don't think, I think so. FSU is, right? FA, I think he lost that when he went to F- or I Yeah, I don't think so. Yeah. Right. Either way, you know he's got some revenge on his mind. And, and this is a guy who, by the way, his record overall is 56 and 62. How does he keep getting these jobs? Who keeps hiring this guy? He's a losing coach. But you don't have to be a good coach to beat the Cows this year. I take FAU. I lay the three points. The Cows season is just going to start spiraling down from here. We saw what Notre Dame did to him. Uh, FAU's got some talent on that team. We saw a little bit last year with these guys. They're not horrible. The last couple of years, they put up some po- – uh, well, two years ago, they put up, what, 35 points on us? 30-something, 30 32 points. Yeah. So they're, they're not horrible. And like I said, they beat up SMU last year. They, they can score. The Cows can't score on anybody except for the Citadel. Something like 31-16 Owls winning the Willie T. Bowl. Wow, interesting. And a, a couple of side notes, though. Uh, so most of the coaching staff from the Owls went to the Cows. Uh, so Charlie West Jr. is now the Cows offensive coordinator. I think Glenn Spencer is now their D coordinator. So there's some familiarity there, Mike. Don't know if that helps. Don't know if that hurts. But the Cows will certainly have a lot of intimate details about the Owls uh, in, heading into that matchup. So we'll uh, we'll see what happens there. Yeah. Well, the Cows don't have one it's thing that counts. Also, and that, yeah. It's talent. They're, there's <laughs> also like, that, yes. It's not the uh, X's and the O's. It's the Jimmy's and the Joe's, right? There we go. All right, game number three, the big one, the one that we care about the most, UCF 27-point favorites at East Carolina. What once was one of the biggest games on our schedule every year, going back to our days in Conference USA with these guys, 2005 all the way through 2014 into the American days. The last few years, this game has been dominated by the Knights. The last time we were in Greenville, we mentioned it briefly earlier, we won by the exact margin, 27 points. And that was with Daryl Mack at quarterback, uh, who that was his first start ever at quarterback. And we still pulled off a four touchdown victory. This year, we have a week under our belts already. East Carolina is coming in. They have not played a game yet this year, so we can expect a little rust out of them. I expect us to be up by four touchdowns at halftime on these guys. If we're not, I'm going to be a little uh, angry, I guess mm. you could say. Oh, oh, I, I guess I will <laughs> I, say that. I, I, feel, I feel a beating of, of East Carolina. And we, like I said, we're, we're going for style points now this year. We saw Hypo this week, even towards the end of the game, not taking knees. Man, he wasn't throwing the ball, but we were still running the ball. Down to the last second of the game, we snapped the ball to run, run another good play. Uh, I expect no mercy to be put on East Carolina. Dylan Gabriel, six touchdown performance. UCF easily covers 56-17 Knights. Ooh. Yeah, okay. I mean, last year it was 56. Uh, sorry, it was 41-28 UCF uh, with the victory in Orlando. So um, not too far from that. Obviously a different team than this year. Okay, laying the 27. Uh, another thing, we did not pick this game, Mike, but where are we, where are we at now with Florida State? So are we are, are we Florida State fans now? Because now we need them to to beat Miami to a invalidate that Miami should be ranked ahead of us after beating UAB and Louisville, but b to 
to then indicate that FAU or sorry FSU really is a good team and that Georgia Tech must be a better team and so we beat that team are we now the are we rooting for the transverse property situation here going forward I don't know about the rest of the year but for this week for sure yes we have to root for Florida State though I don't give them very much chance at all <laughs> I mean, they're not good Miami's actually better than I thought they were going to be and I'm not saying the U is back but Derek King we know how talented that kid is it, they're, I don't see them having any problem with Florida State and Norville's not even going to be at the game right he can't he's not allowed to coach this week because he tested positive so yeah. uh, I mean I'm guessing he's not practicing with the team all week right so what, how prepared is this Florida State team going to be or is that a good thing for them I mean I don't think the players on Florida State really have bought into the whole normal thing. We saw things in the offseason of you know him coming out and apologizing for lying because he said one thing to the team and the guys on the team came out and said, oh, he never said that. And so who knows how much those guys actually like Mike Norville right now. But um, like I was saying with the, the owls and the cows, it, it's talent. And Florida State just doesn't have enough talent, I don't think, to, to beat Miami. Though we are rooting for them, yes. I think we do have to root for them. And we definitely have to root for Georgia Tech now for the rest of the year. I don't think Tech's going to you know, win eight, nine games. But if they can pull off an upset here and there, that'd be great. If they can, if Georgia Tech can beat Miami somewhere down the road or if Georgia Tech can you know, hang tough with Clemson or uh, Louisville or another big win somewhere on the schedule, that'd be great for us. Yeah, they have – I mean, they're, they were Syracuse this week. <clears throat> then they have Louisville – uh, bye week Clemson, um, Boston College. Then they have Notre Dame, bye week Pittsburgh. So they have four ranked opponents currently uh, within their next six games. So if they can win two of those, um, you know maybe that both. I mean, listen, if they beat Clemson and Notre Dame, I mean we look like we look like world beaters. But uh, Pittsburgh is actually playing really well. If they can win two of those four, I think you'd you'd take that right. And if they can be two ranked teams, that would certainly help our cause. Yeah, that's right. Uh, even one if, if they can win one and, and if that one is notre dame or clemson like you're saying you know damn right we're going to be using that all year <laughs> hey look what we did to them and look what they did to you so yeah, that's the, the thing that sucks about college football is that those arguments even have to be made because you can go undefeated and still not be included in the playoff so i mean it is what it is but you're right we're rooting for georgia tech the rest of the year and i guess we're rooting for florida state a little bit Definitely this week. Well, let's uh, let's see what happens. Check back next week to see if Mike uh, got these things right. Again, he's on a hot streak, so you never know where Mike will finish up. But uh, you will if you listen to us. So uh, do that next week. But don't leave just yet because coming up, cow of the week. We are the Suns of UCF. I'm Jeff Allen. Join me each week for unique yet common sense opinions on sports on the Jeff Allen Sports Talk Podcast. We will break down the sports world minus the hot takes with prominent guests and my stable of sports guys. It's sports conversation the way it should be. Search Jeff Allen Sports Talk wherever you get your podcasts or go to JeffAllenSportsTalk.com. This is UCF Athletic Director Danny White. And if you don't want to be the cow of the week, you need to listen to Adam and Mike on the Sons of UCF. Charge on. Go Knights. All right. Cow of the week time. Uh, we will go through, if you're new uh, to us, we go through and uh, because our neighbors to the, to the west there are so geographically challenged and they don't know what the heck they are, they're cows. Uh, and so we uh, like to have a little fun at their expense and what else you're going to do with them. So we have an award each week that Mike and I give out that uh, we hand out to the person or persons or group or whatever that just did something really idiotic or something that made us laugh or scratch our heads, and uh, we don't know what to do with it. So, Mike, I'm going to let you lead this thing off. You uh, you have a really good cow of the week this week. That's right. This one, sometimes cows just fall into your lap. and One of the dumbest things you see in sports all week, this was an easy one. The Atlanta Falcons. <laughs> now... <laughs> We, we've discussed this on the show many times. I'm a Giants fan. You're a Cowboy fan. So you have a whole different look at this. Me as a Giants fan, I'm watching the Giants, and I'm just keeping my eye on the scores. And the Giants look like crap this year. They're not going anywhere. But I'm thinking to myself, you know what? This division sucks so bad. 
the, the Eagles were getting blown out by the Rams. The Cowboys were getting blown out twenty to nothing in the first quarter. I said, 